Hi, this is Nicole Windham and this is part 4 of email marketing. In this video we are going to focus on designing for email campaigns. But why even design for email campaigns? You can either choose to select one of the pre-wired templates on BC or create your own email campaign design. But why even waste time, effort and money to create an email design? Well, in a nutshell, a well-designed email is more readable, attractive and effective at relying information. Refusing to design HTML emails doesn't stop them being sent. It just ensures that they'll remain hideous eyesores. Looking at this example here, HTML versus text email, which one jumps out at you more? Which is faster for you to read? What's the most important information in the email? It's probably the HTML version, correct? Some simple font control and margins create an instant visual hierarchy that plain text struggles to establish. When you come from a web design background, I have some good news. You are very well capable of designing an email campaign. However, there are some important differences though, and understanding these will make the difference between a tiny web page squished into your inbox and a valuable and readable email. Fact is that your subscriber may not read the email. This is because, unlike a web page, which visitors can arrive at via links from other pages or search engines, an email is only ever open when the user decides to open it, and often they'll make that decision based on the subject line. Most of the major email clients, including Outlook, Lotus Notes, and Hotmail, will not display images by default. Instead, they display a broken image icon or an empty rectangle, and we cannot simply expect our readers to see the images. The answer is to always design knowing that your images cannot be relied on. Make sure that if they don't load, the email is still readable and recognizable. Your emails are probably being read in a very narrow window or frame. As a result, our email designs have to be quite narrow, built to work in a limited screen space. Therefore, a good maximum width to aim for is 600 pixels. The single most important guideline for HTML emails is that CSS layout just doesn't work. The major email clients either offer no support at all or mangle it in a myriad frustratingly different ways. Even when margins and padding are supported by most email clients, results will be inconsistent. If the spacing is critical to you, try nesting tables inside your main table instead. Just go old school and also try to avoid role spanning and call spanning. You will achieve more consistent results if you apply CSS styles inline for all the relevant elements in your HTML email. So please make sure you check out the ultimate guide to CSS support in your major email clients on the bottom of the slide. Ideally a basic HTML email design looks like what I provide you with on the resources. I created a basic email design for you, for you to use and to build upon. And it's tested in all major email clients, including Outlook, Hotmail, AOL, Yahoo, and Gmail. Now, a lot of people ask me what other technologies can be used in HTML emails. Talking about scripting in emails, the short answer is that scripting is unsupported in emails. Keep your emails as straight HTML and CSS as possible and avoid the hassle. Same with Flash. In the email client world, Flash is barely existent. In most cases, it's completely absent, and even the fallback image you can select won't show up. So the simple answer here would be to not use it. Same goes for video. As of right now, there are a lot of different ways that video theoretically could be included in an email message, but in practice, most of them won't work for the majority of recipients. Personally, I recommend a simpler approach. Take a screen grab of your video and put that into your email make it a link to view the video on your website and maybe a caption underneath it too. It's one additional click, but it's guaranteed to work for everyone. When it comes to forms, unfortunately the support for forms in email clients is quite inconsistent. Some clients will put up scary looking security warnings when the reader tries to use a form and others will just disable the form so it's unable to be sent. Again, the recommended approach is to link to a form on your website where you know it will work. Finally, I'm going to show you how to install your email campaign template under the Partner Portal. All you need to do is to grab the HTML code and log into the Partner Portal, navigate to Tools and Newsletter Templates, click on Add New Newsletter Template, give the newsletter template a name and switch over to HTML View and paste the HTML code in here. 
Now you need to create a thumbnail image of your newsletter. The dimensions are as stated 300 by 225 pixels and save the template. Now click on assign newsletter template to site. Choose a site to assign one or more newsletter templates to and then choose the template from the list panel underneath and click on the arrow for the template to appear in the right hand window. Then simply click on close. Now back in the admin console, if you'd like to use your custom newsletter design, click on an email campaign that you created or create a new campaign. Go to templates and you see the test template will have replaced all other pre-installed or pre-wired templates on BC. And you see your thumbnail image appear up here in the preview. Click on use template and voila, the template shows up here and you can edit it and change it and then once you saved the draft and tested the email campaign it's ready for you to send out to your readers.